human beings, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Remy and I share lots of vegan recipes and tips to help you live well. And today we're going to be doing a very fun video that I have wanted to do for months and months. And it wasn't until I went to the actual cafe that I will tell you about in just a moment that I decided this video needs to happen. I did need to order some specialty things and this is going to be a very involved video. I started making things yesterday afternoon in preparation for this video, but I think it's going to be worth it. We are recreating special toasts from Devel, which is a Japanese cafe in the Lower East Side of New York. Um, none of the toasts are vegan, so I wanted to make them both vegan and gluten-free, and we're going to recreate all of them. I'm going to just look at the menu and read you the toast items. They're really beautiful. You've probably seen them all over Instagram, and if you live in New York, you definitely know what I'm talking about. So it is a Japanese-style cafe, and they actually have Japanese curries and onigiri and like really cute, just really comfort food-style dishes, which I love. And the toasts that they have, I believe they rotate every once in a while. They have a mentai mayo, which is mentaiko or spicy roe and um that is fish so it's definitely not vegan and it's like striped with mayo and um topped with some nori and then there's a cheese curry one so that's like japanese curry inside the toast a little bit of vegan cheese on top that's the plan anyway we have the ham egg one which is definitely going to be the most challenging one i have some ideas but I'm just gonna throw this out there, that one might not work out. And then the berry and cream cheese toast, which I would say is probably the most iconic. It's also really beautiful. It's got smears of cream cheese and berry jam. And then we have the red bean toast, which is sweetened red bean paste spread on toast and some vegan butter or regular butter, but we're using vegan butter. And last but not least, a honey lemon toast. So obviously we're not gonna be using honey. I still need to figure that one out, but we're just gonna, See how we go. So this is our special toast that we're using, some gluten-free Texas toast. They use Japanese milk bread, but a super thick one, which is important because some of these toasts are gonna be filled. Um, I'm sure you can make your own gluten-free Texas toast, but I opted just to purchase it. I will link it in the description below. I just figured we'd need perfect looking toast for our beautiful creations today. And so thank goodness this exists, okay? This was an Amazon find. <laughs> I've been curious for a while actually. This is just like how I justified finally buying it. So we've got our toast. Let's begin. The first thing I want to do is look at this toast. I have never had this before. Ooh! This actually smells really good. If you've ever had Japanese milk bread, this actually kind of smells like that. Weirdly. And the slices are nice and thick. I wish they were just a little bit more square but this we'll have to do for now. Let's start with the easier ones. We're gonna start with the red bean toast. So for this one, I have some sweet red bean paste, which I made last night. You can find the recipe for this on my blog. I honestly took a little shortcut and mashed up some pre-cooked azuki beans, um, but you can also find this in cans if you don't want to make it yourself. And I also made some little flour butter cutouts last night, and this is just some Earth Balance vegan butter. This goes on top and it's very decorative. So we have our toast ready. I'm gonna put this right on top. And just give it a generous spread. Red bean, especially sweetened red bean, is really popular and common in Japan as a dessert. Um, you'd be surprised. It's kind of like, I don't know, just like a sweet bean paste. And it's really, really good, especially with like mochi or kinako. <laughs> I definitely started with the easiest one, but I just wanted to get my feet wet. And um, knowing that the other ones are going to be a lot more difficult, I thought, let's start here. So I'm just going to put my flour butter pieces right on top. That's it. That is toast number one <laughs> complete. There she is. I'm gonna put this on a cute little plate and set it aside while we do the rest. So next up, I think we're gonna do the mentaiko and mayo. So mentaiko is spicy fish egg, like little tiny eggs. Um, I used a recipe from my friend Lisa of Okonomi Kitchen and she used amaranth, which I thought was so creative because the texture of it really does look like mentaiko. Does it taste like it? I can't really say whether it tastes like it. I haven't had it in years, but as far as looks go, it's pretty convincing and this concoction, whatever it is, is delicious. Looking at the picture, it looks like they slice it into six pieces and there's mayo on one side and mentaiko on the other. Maybe I should have put the mayo on before slicing. Did I just make a big mistake? It's very possible. <laughs> I'm gonna grab some vegan mayo. This is the Just Mayo. I'm really not a big mayo eater or consumer myself, <laughs> but it is really common to use it in Japan, especially you may know Kewpie mayo, which is really popular. Um, it's just really nice sometimes to balance out. 
We're gonna spread the mayo onto one of the slices and then we're gonna spread the spicy menpico on the other slice. So the mayo toast is done. We'll just set this toast aside. Now, this is not really pink like spicy roe is or red in color. So we're just gonna forfeit that because I think the fact that we've even created something that remotely looks like fish roe is pretty impressive given that it's vegan. One difference is it's definitely not as moist. Oh, so we actually get two slices out of this and then we're gonna put the roe slice in the middle and this mayonnaise slice over here. Here we have our toast. It is missing a little sprinkle of shredded nori, so we're gonna do that right now. Nori goes right in the center, like that. And here's our mint mayo toast. The next toast we're gonna do is the honey lemon toast. I am guessing that it's like maybe a thin layer of butter and then some honeyed lemons, kind of like a glaze. Um, what I'm gonna do is put a thin layer of vegan butter and then I'm gonna add some lemon slices, super thinly sliced. And instead of the honey, we're gonna add some organic cane sugar and then just torch it so it's nice and brulee and gets that like sticky caramelization. I just feel like this way will be a little bit easier than putting it on the pan. Um, <laughs> and also it's gonna be vegan friendly. So let's give it a try. I'm gonna cut super thin slices so that it gets really nice and caramelized. So something like this. Okay, so for the lemon toast, I think I'm gonna put the biggest one in the middle. And then the rest are just like corner cuts. It's kind of cute. I like this idea. This is like reminds me of like a classic like upside down lemon cake. There's our lemon toast. And then I'm gonna add um, organic cane sugar on top and then I'm gonna caramelize it. And then a tiny piece of mint, just like the picture. <gasps> That's it. There's our honey lemon toast. For the curry one, I think I am going to cut out some of the filling to make like a little pocket. And then I'm gonna put in the Japanese curry that I made last night. Um, I ate it for dinner and it was really good. It's a little chunky and I feel like it's more about like the sauce than like the stuff inside. So I'm just gonna put the sauce in there, add some vegan cheese, and I'm probably gonna torch it as well. I'm a little scared to cut into this toast because it's not super thick. Like, it's definitely thicker than your average toast, but it's not the, the thickest. This is the Japanese curry that I made last night. It has yuba in it, which is gonna look a little funky. I'm just gonna try and scoop out like the most saucy bits I can find. I'm gonna try to keep it neat and tidy. I think they actually put a little ring of mayo on the outside. It's just, I don't really feel like grabbing out the piping bag right now, to be honest with you guys. So I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> When life gives you tiny gluten-free bread, make tiny vegan cheese to put on top. It's all relative. Trick your brain into thinking the bread is regular size by making your cheese small. Okay, and here's our curry toast. It's been an hour. Um, this is the most involved toast I've ever made in my life. Okay, so for the last two toasts, um, I'm putting these out because I think these are the most difficult. The ham and egg toast, I'm probably the least confident in taste-wise. I think I can make it look similar. I just honestly don't really feel like <laughs> going the effort of making the faux vegan egg. If you guys have seen, I have an old YouTube video where I made a bunch of different kinds of vegan eggs. Um, I think the rice paper one that I posted in that video would actually be really good for this. I just don't want to do it. <laughs> I also cut out this little piece of veggie ham thing. I wanted it to look like lunch meat, so I rounded the edges. And I think for the egg part, I think I'm just gonna use silken tofu. And I'm gonna use some pureed cabbage squash as the yellow. So yeah, I'm kind of just spitting this tofu in here to make it look like it's like, you know, egg white. Does it really look like egg white? No, you don't need to tell me that, it's okay. I know. Ooh. What if I put black salt in the egg yolk? It was your fault. Oh no! I forgot to put the ham in it! Fuck! Okay. Okay, there we go. Last but certainly not least is the famous berry jam and cream cheese toast. I'm gonna be using um, pre-made both. <laughs> So I'm using Harry's Berry Strawberry Preserves. These are gonna be a little bit chunkier and not really like super jammy, um, but I think it'll be fine. Like, and then I have this tofu cream cheese. 
I actually really like Tofuti. I know everyone's into like the different fancy cashew cream cheese, but this is like my personal favorite and it has the best texture for what we're gonna do. So it's gonna be jam first. I don't know, I think it looks pretty good. So we're officially done with all of our toasts. Um, let's put them all on the table and I can show you how they turned out and then we could compare and contrast. I think the one I'm the most proud of is the mentaiko toast. It looks really cool. And then the, obviously the berry and cream cheese one I think is gonna be the most yummy. The egg one. <laughs> and the red bean one looked like poop. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna try one of them because this is one that I've always been curious about. I hope you enjoyed the video um, because it took me a lot longer than it probably seems like it did. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if there's any other food that you want me to recreate vegan and gluten free, let me know.